Hi, I'm Meeg Pincus, author of Cougar Crossing, How Hollywood Celebrity Cougar Helped Build a Bridge for City Wildlife. This book, illustrated by Alexander Vidal, is a true story that's still happening today. As you may know, true stories are called nonfiction. I'm going to read you this book so you can see how exciting nonfiction stories can be. P-22 is his name, for real. P for Puma, also called Mountain Lion or Cougar. 22 for ID number. More on that later. He paces, muscles flex, tail twitches, famous letters loom above him in the night. How did this mountain lion get here? To a park squeezed between three huge highways in America's second largest city. How did he become P-22, the famous Hollywood cougar and a hero for city wildlife? And look at those guys in the corner. Those are the two wildlife biologists, Miguel Ordignana from the Natural, Museum, Natural History Museum of LA County and Jeff Sikich from the National Park Service. And they're commenting on the side. Miguel says, we wildlife biologists can guess how P-22 got to that spot. And Jeff says, and we know how he became a hero because we were part of it. Now back to P-22's story. Born in the Santa Monica Mountains, a national park area near the city of Los Angeles, P-22 faced his first big challenge at age two. The time came for him to disperse to leave home to find a territory of his own, claim it with claw swipes on the ground, and protect it to the death from cougar competitors. But other males had already claimed every inch of these mountains, and the rumbling city bellowed below. P-22 needed a way to get more mountains with space to spare. But how? Oh, oh, we've got a way, says Miguel. A way to help all the L.A. mountain lions and other critters squeeze for space like this, says Jeff. The best bet? A bridge. A big, wide animal bridge. A wildlife crossing covered in trees and grass. This could connect the city's last natural spaces to more mountain ranges and open land up north. But sadly, no such wildlife crossing existed. Jeff says, we tried for years to get a wildlife crossing constructed, but we didn't have the support we needed. Miguel says, LA's Puma population was on its own and on the road to extinction. So, P-22 headed into the city. Like a tourist, he strolled past Beverly Hills mansions and Hollywood hotspots. Then he hit his next big challenge, huge freeways, packed with nonstop speeding cars and trucks. Miguel says, oh man, we've lost too many LA Cougars to car crashes. And Jeff says, more every year. By some miracle, P-22 made it across two major freeways, surviving 20 lanes of LA's legendary traffic. He found himself in a green hilly place with no other cougar sense around. He couldn't go back. He couldn't go forward. Swipe, he claimed his spot there. Griffith Park was a puny pad for a puma, some 17 times smaller than a typical territory, but P-22 made do. He stalked prey at night, mostly deer, sometimes a coyote or raccoon. He hid from humans and dozed during the day. Miguel says, I jumped when I saw him on the remote camera. A mountain lion in our city park? For real? And Jeff says, we had to get that crazy cat into our National Park Service cougar study. One night. P-22 caught scent of a human. He heard a rustle in the brush and whipped his head around for a look. Too late, he felt a sharp pinprick in his haunch. Jeff says, it took me three weeks to find our ghost cat. Then we gave him a nice nap, a checkup, 
and a tracking collar. And don't forget a name, says Miguel, P-22, the 22nd Puma tagged in the study. Sometimes P-22 scratched markings in the dirt and planted his scent to attract a mate, but his signals were met with silence. Poor guy, his territory was too small and isolated for a mate, says Miguel, and we couldn't move him out. Wild male cougars rarely survive relocation, says Jeff. One day, after eating some small prey in the park, P-22 started to feel sick. His skin burned and itched. His hair dropped off in clumps. His eyes nearly swelled shut. What was happening? Rodent poison, a killer for wild predators, says Jeff. We gave P-22 some life-saving medicine. And Miguel says, come on, people. There are plenty of ways to repel rodents without poison. Look them up. Feeling better many months later, P-22 wandered into a neighborhood near the park. He discovered a cozy spot, calm and quiet, dark and dry, and settled down for a snooze. When he woke up, loud voices, bright lights, a media circus, says Jeff. We told them to clear the crowds and give, 22 some space, give P-22 some space to exit, says Miguel but nobody would budge. After most of the harried humans finally headed home, P-22 slinked back into the night. He'd just lie low inside his park territory and try to avoid any big challenges for a while. And then down in the corner, Miguel says, meanwhile, P-22 had become world famous. Jeff says, finally, more folks were caring about cougars and supporting the wildlife crossing. However, one spot inside the park enticed P-22 with its nightly sounds and scents, strange sounds and scrumptious scents of prey he'd never heard or smelled before. Then this, says Jeff, P-22 ate one of the LA Zoo's koalas for dinner. Would his fans freak? Nope, says Miguel. People, even the zoo director, stood by their favorite cougar. P-22 continued to avoid humans at all costs, as cougars do. Even on the day Griffith Park hosted flocks of his fans, he was probably sleeping on the other side of the park. Jeff says, Aw, the P-22 Day Festival on October 22nd, named our Cool Cats Day by the city of Los Angeles. Miguel says, so much support for city wildlife and the crossing. P-22 paces, perhaps more slowly than he used to. Late in his lifespan, he likely won't live long enough to see the completed crossing, but Thanks to him, it will be built to save his cougar cousins and other wildlife. Hollywood celebrity cougar will forever be a hero to city animals everywhere. He spotlighted a message for us all. We must build bridges to live in harmony with nature, for real. Thanks P-22 for the future, says Miguel. And Jeff says, you did this, buddy, for us all. That was the end of the story. And here you'll see what's called the back matter. After the story, all these interesting facts about this true nonfiction story. So you'll see a timeline of P-22 and all the mountain lions in the National Park Service study. And you got lots of facts about cougars and crossings. So when you get the book, you can see those. And on the next spread of the back matter, all of Alexander Vidal's drawings of wildlife of California. And it says, can you find them in this book? So if you get the book, 
from your library or a bookstore, you can go through the book and find every single one of these animals that are native to Southern California throughout the book. And that is Cougar Crossing. Thank you so much, Simon Kid subscribers, for joining me for this reading. Thank you.